Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. We have a question that came into the website and this one is involves setup. And it starts out by saying, okay, I'm a bit confused on the proper sequence of events. In reading your manual on page 60, you start talking how the shoulders and torso should start the backswing. The club head movement is begun by the turning of your torso and your shoulders. Meanwhile, the club is merely held passively in your hands. Uh, I don't think I've ever said that the club is held passively in your hands. I've always talked about the grip being relatively firm and controlled. You have to be holding it somewhat about as, 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 as firmly as you would a baseball bat or a tennis racket if you were hitting it or any other type of stick or, or bat or issue that you, uh, that you could play any sport with. I think many people hold their, hold their, uh, their, 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 their club more loosely than they hold a pen or a pencil when they're going to be signing their name. And I don't think that that really fits in as a good way to do it. So I, I'm, I don't believe I've ever said passively, and I'm going to stay with what I say relatively firmly. On a scale of one to five, one being holding it like a, like, like, you know, like a dead fish and five squeezing, squeezing your eyeballs out, I want to be about a three right in the middle, a business handshake. All right, going on from there, he says, by this I mean that your hands and arms are put into motion by your upper body, this motion of your torso and shoulders carries down to your hips, legs, and feet. Then you go on to say the one-piece takeaway is both shoulders and hips. You can achieve the true one-piece takeaway by turning your hips and shoulders around your spine, setting the arms and club in motion. So, I guess this is, here comes the question. So, do I start the swing with my shoulders and let my hips follow, or do I start with my hips and the shoulders at the same time? I've tried both and get a different result. Okay. I think we can definitely clear this this issue up. All right, so let, let's talk. We're going to talk about about the takeaway. All right, we're going to. I'm going to start by saying that 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 one of the secret things we're dealing with here is uh, in terms of of the swing is timing. Timing is the proper sequential movement of the parts of the body. That means certain things have to move in the right order, and we want to create an order that in the back in the in the takeaway and backswing. That order becomes the action, and then in the forward swing, the reverse happens so that we have the we stick with the law of, of action reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that's our firm, our main primary uh, uh, thing that we're trying to achieve here is to be able to set up the fact that in our takeaway, it's going to have an exact opposite reaction in the, in the in the forward upswing, or as some people call it, the downswing. The other thing is is that. Tempo is the speed of the swing, like the drum beat by which you swing at, all right? We all have our own tempos. It's, some of it is built on our personalities and, evidence, on, uh, and, and things of that sort. And so, and naturally, uh, in terms of uh, competition, as the adrenaline gets flowing, your tempo tends to get more fast, and that can throw everything, that can throw the timing off. So that's why uh, once you realize what your tempo is, especially in pressure situations, uh, you want, you want to keep your breathing slow and, and maintain your tempo so that all of these things can happen correctly. So takeaway what is it all right I believe and again I think you can agree that that just looking at a car or a golf cart all action starts from the center all right the hub the hub of the body is the is is your, the center of gravity of your body which is the point at the base of your uh, the base of your spine now naturally I also say that the the center of the swing is the top of your spine so the the swing being as we teach it that it is less body and more arms the the club head through the shaft to the to the forward arm connecting in the shoulder and the takeaway to the top to impact and then the, the trailing arm from the club head to the shoulder becomes the string and the rock and string principle because we're all about less body and swinging the arms faster. The more the, when I swing a rock on a string the faster the, the faster the rock starts to go as I let more string out what happens my hand moves less. So the symbolism again is rock, string and this is my hand. So when I want to swing this rock faster on this string, I hold my hand, I let it, I make it move less. All right. The whole world tells you the exact opposite. The the more you want to hit a ball, uh, and especially if you want to hit a ball harder or so try to hit it swing faster to go longer, they've all said take a wider stance because you need a bigger uh, base of support to control the turn, uh, to make a bigger turn and a longer backswing. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep our regular stance. We're just going to. Why not keep our wide knees, outward pressure, and resist the knees more? DJ gave the best statement ever. When I want to hit a ball harder, I hold my knees more, and I swing my arms faster that way to the target. All right, so that's the understanding we're at. We're less body, 
so we can swing our arms faster. The less the body moves, the more stable it is, the more you got control of your swing, and, and when you hold your knees, you're gonna have the limited turn, and, and, and the three-quarter back swing becomes a lot more simple to do. All right, so getting back to this, how do I start it? I'm gonna start it with the core, all right? I believe, I believe, and I, I, I picture my body as ankles to knees is one square, knees to hips is the middle square, and then hips to shoulders is the top square, all right? With the wide knees outward pressure, I'm basically resisting, very much resisting the two bottom squares, all right? Because the one I have to control is if this top one gets out of position and starts turning too much, once you turn, once you turn too much, it allows the clubs to go a lot longer and they can start breaking down at the top of the backswing, all right? And that just hope opens the whole, the whole uh, Pandora's box of, of problems. So I'm going to think about the right knee and the right hip and the right shoulder. The knee's gonna stay relatively stable, right? Because I've set up and I'm keeping the wide knees out with pressure. The only thing the right knee's gonna do in this takeaway is I'm gonna maintain its flex and might even flex more as I sit or sink into the backswing. But I'm really gonna start my backswing with the right hip and the right shoulder. Just basically, I'm gonna take them both at the same time and try to turn them just a little bit. And, and a little bit is maintained because I'm not going to let my left knee uh, go crazy in a backswing, okay? So I'm gonna start it with my right knee and my right hip. Just like if you stand here and you wanna turn a little bit to shake hands with somebody, you're just gonna do this. So the whole square of the, of the middle square and the upper square will move together to start the swing. But here is the big issue. This is the critical part that I, I conceive is, 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 is absolutely critical and important to do it. Even though I'm starting the, the backswing, the takeaway, with my right hip and my right shoulder, my whole concept, my whole feeling is to feel that, the, that, that I move the club head first. So the squares are going to move the triangle, meaning hand to shoulder to shoulder to hand, and it's going to move the triangle, and the whole key is to feel like the toe, the toe moves first, and it's starting, when it moves, it is starting to move toe up into the backswing, into the catcher's mitt, and then up the tree, all right? Now, I've been on some, on some pretty, some pretty uh, uh, phenomenal equipment that can measure things to like thousands of a second, and, and, and it showed that even though, even though I try to, and my hip starts moving a 32nd of an inch, uh, a thousandth of a second before the, the, the club moves, it's that close. So in my mind, I'm starting with this, but the object is to feel, sense, and see that, that the toe moves first, and the toe moves slightly opening toe up into the catcher's mitt as, and keeping the palms perpendicular. So the two squares, turn the triangle to get the, to get the hands and arms to move the club with the toe moving first. That's what I think about. So I get into my preloaded heavy right setup, get into good posture, and then when I'm gonna start it, I'm just gonna start with a little bit as I feel like my shoulders and hips are gonna start turning. So I sit and sink into the right side, and then from there, then you just ring the bell, bump, and swing up to the finish. But remember, the big issue is to always feel that the squares turn the triangle to set the toe in motion, and I like to see and feel that the toe is moving even a little sooner. We know it's not, a dead heat is perfect, all right? And so with the, with the feeling that the, that the toe, the shaft, the whole club and the arms are moving first in the backswing, when we hit the bump, when we get up to the, to the top of the backswing, ring the bell and bump, the lower body starts. And so the, the sequence of action would be that in the takeaway, we feel like it's the, it's the shaft, the torso, the hips, the knees, go this way, and then what? In the downswing, when we ring the bell and bump, it starts from the ground up, from the feet, to the knees, to the hips, to the torso, shoulders, arms and club come down. So it's a reverse, we get the, uh, we get the actual, for every action is an equal and opposite reaction, a lot of physics working in our favor, and that is what really creates the stretch in the muscles. The muscles are going this way, the arms were still going up that way, at the very end of the backswing. So at this point, this action going this way, this action going this way, in two opposite directions, there's gotta be a winner, and the winner will be the lower body and the arms staying firm and not letting the wrist break. When all of this pressure goes this way, the muscles are stretched to their max up here like that, then, and you run the bell because they're stretching. This way, there's gotta be a winner. When this doesn't break down, it just pulls and snaps the arms down. It changes the direction, and we just, fire the hands and arms to the finish. And that's how, we, that's how we have a swing, the peak performance swing, creating centrifugal force to hit the golf ball more solid, straight, and longer. Okay, hopefully this answers your question and gets you into position now where you have physics of action-reaction on your side. 
just by starting the proper the, the backswing with by the, the with the proper sequence, meaning the torso, right hip and right shoulder pulling back, starts the triangle, which starts the club. And as we know, I, as I said, I like to feel like the club is going first. But even if it's a dead tie, the point is, is we start it. We're starting it from the th sense of here to here to there, and then the downswing is just the opposite, the to, to forward upswing. Okay, this sequencing is important for power, control, stability, balance. And hitting the ball more solid and straight, which is what we all, which is all about shooting lower scores, controlling your golf ball. All right, well that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to y'all again soon.